Welcome back to your show, Identity Zoom Show, where today we're talking about debt and the relationship between debt and human rights. And in the studio from Zoom Code, I'm joined by Janet Ajo uh, and Tafadzwa. Um, and, but before we went on the break, uh, Janet, you were already beginning to follow up on what Tafadzwa had said, and you were telling us the different, the, actually the relationship uh, between how government can borrow and actually provide for the city council, I just guarantee to guarantee the city council. Yes. How does that work? It is um, imposed upon the government to ensure that there is the fulfillment, the progressive fulfillment uh, of rights. So they then end up going to borrow mm -hmm. so that they can then provide these rights. And um, what it means is they're not only borrowing, but it must be very specific and targeted then at ensuring that those rights, it, it benefits the citizens. It's not just gobbled by, say, administration costs or the wage bill or something like that. So there is then that relationship as well. It also goes on to the relationship to repayments uh, of the debt itself so that because the human rights, the, the United Nations is actually an instrument on debt, on the issue of debt and human rights. Mm -hmm. So repayments don't have to prejudice the fulfillment or the progressive realization of social and economic rights. The government still has an obligation and what it means is the creditors or those that the government goes to borrow from, they must also respect that the government has this duty duty or obligation and mandate that they have to fulfill so they don't have to jeopardize the fulfillment of rights uh, in the name of repayments uh, but also in the name of when the money comes is it really used for the fulfillment of social and economic rights and we were talking then about the guaranteeing of debts because um, I'm glad that we will be going into a devolved system and our govern our local authorities are going to have a lot of mandate um, in terms of providing in the public finance management domain and one of them is the issue of debt but local uh, local authorities have always borrowed um, from uh, they can ask for for resources from the government or also from external sources and they seek for borrowing uh, powers mm -hmm. from the ministry uh, in which they fall under that's the ministry of local government and public works so they seek for go for borrowing powers uh, from the parent ministry. And in the constitution, it is also very clear that the government can actually guarantee to a creditor that, okay, the city of Bulawayo or Mashingo, city council, they need to borrow this money for the construction of uh, a water plant or water purification plant or a sewer plant. And they will guarantee that in, the, in case that there are challenges in payments, the government will assume who take that debt, take the, debt. the debt. So that is then the publicly guaranteed debt. And there have actually been such cases mm -hmm. of local authorities that have been guaranteed mm -hmm. by the central government, mm -hmm. yes, in terms of provision of social services and definitely provision of social services. And ultimately, they lead to the progressive realization of mm -hmm. social and economic rights that we are talking about. But I'm sure we'll link it as, mm -hmm. as we go. It's not only social and economic rights, but as citizens, they're also the civil and political rights, the right to information, to having this information for you to know mm -hmm. that your government, your central government or your local authority is borrowing for the sake of uh, the fulfillment mm -hmm. of ri your rights. And there are mechanisms under which you can then follow that up. I mean, you have just... <laughs> taught us so much and I'm just thinking in the things that you spoke about Jenny to say the government then has to borrow to provide for social economic and political rights because when we're talking about political rights we're thinking about the likes of Zek how do they function how do they make sure that we're participating in elections issues of electoral um, education and all that so it's part of political rights right so mm -hmm. I'm just thinking at the time that what is the link between the fiscal a budget and so the, the 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 link between when we have this fiscal budget where we know that also 
education has been given this much money, uh, the health has been given this much money, and the minister has set aside this much money, and then at some point the government realizes to say, oh wait, we had said one billion for education, for instance, and then, oh, we, it's not enough, um, then we have to go and borrow. And so you also mentioned, Janet, that when uh, the borrower, the lender, whoever is giving the government, has to also not to jeopardize the progressive realization of those rights. How do you strike the balance between the government having to allocate resources that are adequate for realization of those rights and then having to realize at some point that, oh, the, the allocation that we made is not enough, let's go and borrow. And in their borrowing, they're doing it uh, with, responsibility, with responsibility, so much so that they also don't jeopardize those they're, they're borrowing from. Mm -hmm. And they don't jeopardize our progressive realization of human rights. And how do they, <laughs> I know it's a mouthful, how do they also assure and guarantee f from whoever they are borrowing? I, I just am going to allow you to respond quickly. And Tafazo, you can come in as well. Definitely, I think there are two constituencies that have, the government also doesn't want to be a bad data. Yeah. And I think we've been a bad data for, for a long time. It's in the public domain. Exactly. Because right I mean, now we are not, the, yes. The old governance. Yes, into, the, the, into new, the new as yes. well. Yes, so we, we, we are a bad data. We haven't been receiving resources. So, because if you don't repay, even in, in your own household, yeah. if you don't repay, it means the next time you cannot go back there and the w and word will go out that if you if you lend to Nyari, you're not going to get your money back. So you really need to, to have a debt repayment strategy uh, that is sustainable, but that is also hinged in, I would say, a human rights-based approach mm -hmm. where you also have to do the cost-benefit analysis um, in terms of how are you going to ensure that back home within the constituents of the citizens you're still um, fulfilling your mandate mm -hmm. uh, in terms of provision of services and also the, pro the fulfillment, protection, and ensuring that uh, human rights are, are, are enjoyed. Uh, yes. yes, and <coughs> when you borrow, you don't borrow for consumption, so would take it mm -hmm. that the government is also borrowing to build systems and structures that will ensure that because the best situation is to be able to, re to, to mobilize resources locally. And also uh, the issue of uh, our law, it is very clear in terms of the borrowing limits. So for the government to maintain a balance between borrowing and also ensuring that there is a realization of the human rights, it has to stick to what the law says. Mm -hmm. I think according to the Public Debt Management Act of 2015, the government should borrow an amount that does not exceed 30% of the previous government's revenue. Hmm. So at any given time, the government, when it borrows in any particular year, it should be guided by those limits. And uh, if it does strike that particular balance, I'm sure we will still borrow, but remain uh, with a sustainable debt uh, levels. And um, in terms of our borrowing as well, the government should also remember that at any given time the public debt to GDP ratio the gross domestic product mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. ratio should not exceed 70 percent uh, so that particular ratio has been exceeded in some cases but also the government when it borrows mm -hmm. it should always ensure that the borrowing levels are set at a standard that allows us to yes provide the public social services mm -hmm. that we're supposed to provide but at the same time, maintain sustainable levels. Mm -hmm. Because next year, another year, we still have to borrow. Mm. And we should not uh, keep on borrowing to an extent that even our creditors mm. will not be willing to lend to us. Wow. On that poignant note, we're going to come back and we want to get more deeper into, we heard about how there should be a link between borrowing and the reason why we're borrowing. And in this case, the assumption is when the government is borrowing is to ensure social, economic and political rights of its citizens. We want to understand when we come back to say to what extent has the government been doing that? How do citizens participate in making sure that we are monitoring our government that we put in place to be able to deliver and to be able to be accountable to say, are they borrowing on our behalf to fulfill their mandate or otherwise? Do not go away, stay with us. We'll be back shortly.